Nick, our next presenter is Suma Reddy, founder of Future Acres. Through her high-tech robotic tools, Future Acres wants to bring innovation into low-efficiency farming tasks. Welcome, Suma. Thank you, Priyanka. Um, it is absolutely wonderful to be here. This is probably one of the first venues where I feel like I can bring my whole self um, into the room, so I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Suma, uh, CEO of Future Acres. Uh, very excited. Again, we're an ag tech startup making farm tools for tomorrow. Uh, next slide, please. So first, a bit about me. I, I actually started my career as a Peace Corps volunteer in West Africa, uh, and I became interested in understanding access, opportunity, and, and really how we could better manage our resources and build a better future. So I've built on this foundation over the past 15 years as a mission-driven entrepreneur, an organizer, and an activist. As an entrepreneur, I've built companies at the intersection of ag tech and clean tech, from indoor farming to organic waste to energy, and now robotics. As an organizer, I've built uh, or been active in inclusive communities such as Women Who Hardware, Lesbians Who Tech, and Republic. Uh, and as a queer advocate, I've led grassroots queer API groups to advance our causes. And so today I'm here because I think deeply about how we can use entrepreneurship as a tool for equity, access, and justice to center innovation around justice to solve systemic problems. Next slide, please. So why are we here? I know I don't need to tell this room, but just to remind us, uh, while farms are producing more food than they ever have, it's not enough. We need to produce 50% more food with the same amount of land and reduce emissions by 75% to meet our population goals and climate goals. So, but right now we face three challenges. One, farms are facing downward pressures on revenue. It's expected to decline 12% by this year. And another big challenge is finding people to do the work. We have a declining and aging workforce uh, for many reasons. And one of these reasons is that it's really hard work. Um, our farm workers are working in brutally hot temperatures, face injuries. Uh, and when we talk to them in Ventura, most don't want their kids to do this work. And then from the consumer side, from, from our side, we increasingly care about seed to fork transparency, organic, local, sustainable, and now responsible. And so what this all adds up to is a need to increase efficiency and lessen the burden on labor, especially for one particular category. Next slide, please. Specialty crops. Um, so hopefully we all like our fruits uh, and veggies. So specialty crops like table grapes and stone fruit are a massive 45 billion market, but 25% of that revenue is, is eaten up uh, by people costs, more than three times higher than the average for all farms and then 25 to 30% by efficiency losses. And the reason for that is that specialty crops are, are delicate little things. Um, we would probably shudder at a bruised grape in our grocery stores. Um, and on top of that, uh, labor, 30% of labor is spent on transporting crops alone. So 30% of time and energy just spent using a wheelbarrow going up and down rows. And so for that reason, you know, we're starting with table grapes because one, it's a massive market, 1.1 million grapes harvested every year in the U.S., and 99% of which are grown in your backyard and our backyard of California. So with this in mind, uh, we launched this company on a mission to create sustainable, advanced, and intelligent approaches uh, to crop harvesting through robotics. Next slide, please. So we're starting with Carry, an autonomous harvesting companion that builds new efficiency and safety into our food supply chain at the point of harvest. It is a harvesting sidekick. So it works alongside farm workers and quite literally unloads the burden of crop transport uh, from their day. So this simple task can increase efficiency by up to 30%, paying for itself in only 80 days. And importantly, it increases farm workers' safety as well as income and provides valuable analytics to farms. And so we do this through the advanced tech pictured here from machine learning and computer vision to clean battery power uh, and robustness that allows carry to survive in dirt, dust, heat, and rain. Next slide, please. And we have the support to make this happen. We're backed by Wavemaker Partners and Labs, a studio with a track record of success in AI automation and food robotics. Our team of seven experienced engineers and technologists, myself included, are really excited uh, to bring Carrie to the market. So we're kicking off this $3 million uh, uh, crowdfunding campaign. Next slide, please. 
um, in hopes that we can build uh, our engineering team and manufacture our first products for pilot launch uh, next year. And so this gets us back to the beginning question. Can entrepreneurship be used as a tool for equity, access, and justice? Our vision is, yes, by creating a platform focused on the future farm and farm worker. One, building sustainability by using precision agriculture to measure soil and crop health, track yield, quality, and food waste. Two, enable farming as a livelihood, in including making smaller scale agriculture more accessible so that we have more BIPOC, queer, and un underrepresented farmers. And three, as a queer brown woman, build a coalition of private, public, academic, and nonprofit player players interested in centering technology and innovations, AI, automation, machine learning around justice. And we would love for all of you to join this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Zuma. Wonderful presentation. And I urge you all to check out their active crowdfunding campaign on Seed Invest. Trevor, would you like to start with feedback for Zuma, please? Yeah, so Zuma, I think that this is a really great approach. Um, what I love about the robotics approach to this is that you're both addressing sort of the ability to sort of drive the, the market opportunity, but then at the same time, um, making sure not to replace the workers, but you're actually trying to improve their conditions. And I think that that's really a brilliant blending of, of both people and technology. Um, oftentimes we see that it's just simply a replacement. So I think that's really well done. I guess I'm just curious where you are right now um, with, with the product itself and, and either how many are, are sort of in use or where you are with sort of the prototyping process. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so we are, we're early stage. We have one prototype. Um, right now, we're working on building the next round of prototypes for our founding farm partner, HMC Farms, uh, this fall. Harvest season ends uh, Thanksgiving around uh, that day. Uh, and then we hope to do that pilot launch the following year with probably 10 to 20 units. I stress about our farming situation all the time and just knowing some of the stats that you stated, you know, our farmers are older. Um, not only do they not want their kids to go, their kids aren't willing, interested, you know, all of that. And then, so I'm just curious about adopt, adoption. You know, those of us outside of farming see how clear these solutions will make things better. And yet culturally, how, how does this work for people adopting and, wh and what will that be as far as your sales cycle? Yeah, that's an awesome question. So I think it, of adoption in terms of the user, the end user, the farm worker, because we can't ever forget them, and then also these farms. And so from a farm perspective, um, one of our distribution commercialization partners is a very large table grape breeder um, with over 1,800 table grape and stone fruit customers. And they've only partnered with a few technology players, and one of them is us, because they recognize this is a need that farms have not only in this country, um, but around, around the world. Um, and they definitely understand that farms um, and farm owners are craving this technology. On the other side, the farm workers themselves who are actually doing the work, right? We, we've talked to them and they're like, if this can make our jobs easier, we're all for it, right? Uh, and they, when we've talked to them about the prototype, they're like, we don't see this as replacing us, right? Because harvesting of grapes is so far in the future that it's kind of funny when people talk about it, right? So we, we're, we're just tackling a problem now. Thank well, you. And then just, I'm just gonna add on real quick about, is it like, a, is it a rental model? Do they own them? Is there money up front? Like how, how does this take place if I'm a grape farmer and, and kind of just tiptoeing in to maybe explore this? Yeah, so if you're a grape farmer, it's a hardware or lease model for the actual hardware and then a subscription uh, and service for the maintenance and, and service. So we'll sell and lease and then a monthly uh, or yearly subscription for each farm who we expect to have six to eight carries, a fleet of carries on the farm. Thank you for your work on this. Thank you. Thank you, Suma. That was wonderful.